Did this man convince God to allow him to live 15 extra years? According to the Bible, the Lord gave the prophet Isaiah the task of communicating to King Hezekiah of Judah the news that he was going to pass away. Second Kings contains the relevant information. 2 Kings 21, Amplified Bible In those days, when Sennacherib first invaded Judah, Hezekiah became deathly ill. The prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not recover. We read, in those days, this happened at the time of the Assyrian invasion of Judah. We are not given any information regarding how Hezekiah fell ill. It could have been through something that was readily apparent to everyone, or it could have been through something that only God is aware of. However, Hezekiah became sick. It was certainly permitted by the Lord. God showed extraordinary compassion toward Hezekiah by revealing to him that the end of his life was drawing nigh. Not all people are given the time to set your house in order. We know from comparing 2 Kings 18.2 with 2 Kings 26 that Hezekiah was 39 years old when he learned he would soon die. 2 Kings 22-3 20, Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Please, O Lord, remember now with compassion how I have walked before you in faithfulness and truth and with a whole heart entirely devoted to you and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. We read, he turned his face toward the wall. This demonstrates how sincere Hezekiah was in his supplications. He prayed in private to God, not to any man, and directed his petitions to the Almighty. Turning his face to the wall, thereby both dismissing Isaiah and entering into solitary confinement with God, Hezekiah poured out his heart to the Lord. To our ears, Hezekiah's prayers might almost sound ungodly. In it, he emphasizes his own virtues, and the importance of self-justification. Hezekiah seems to have prayed something along the lines of, Lord, I've been such a good child, and you aren't being fair to me. Please, don't forget what a good boy I've been, and come to my rescue. But on the old covenant, this was a valid principle on which to approach God. Passages like Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28 show that under the Old Covenant, blessing or cursing was sent by God on the basis of obedience or disobedience. Deuteronomy 28, 15-18, Amplified Bible But it shall come about if you do not listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all His commandments and His statutes which I am commanding you today, then all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. You will be cursed in the city and cursed in the field. Your basket and your kneading bowl will be cursed. The offspring of your body and the produce of your land, the offspring of your herd and the young of your flock will be cursed. But under the new covenant, we are blessed on the principle of faith in Jesus. Galatians 3, 13-14 Amplified Bible Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs crucified on a tree or cross. In order that in Jesus Christ the blessing of Abraham might also come to the Gentiles, so that we would all receive the realization of the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Hezekiah's principle of prayer isn't fitting for a Christian today. We pray in the name of Jesus, not in the name of who we are or what we have done. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Also, under the Old Covenant, Hezekiah would have regarded this as evidence that God was very displeased with him. 
But why should a saint be fond of life or afraid of death? Since to him it is as his father's horse to carry him to his father's house. 2 Kings 20, 4-7 Amplified Bible Before Isaiah had gone out to the middle courtyard, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, ancestor, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, behold, I am healing you. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord. I will add fifteen years to your life and save you and this city, Jerusalem, from the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will protect this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Then Isaiah said, Bring a cake of figs, and they brought it and placed it on the painful inflammation, and he recovered. In response to Hezekiah's prayer, God granted Hezekiah fifteen years more. Hezekiah was granted an added fifteen years. The prayer that Hezekiah offered was very significant. There is no doubt that Hezekiah's life would have been cut short if he had not offered up his fervent prayer at that critical moment. This is just another illustration of the significance of the principle that prayer is effective. As a matter of fact, God gave two gifts to Hezekiah. First, he gave the gift of an extended life. Second, he gave the gift of knowing he only had 15 years left. If he were wise, this would still motivate King Hezekiah to walk right with God and set his house in order. We read, I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. This promise was in accord with the Lord's previous prophecies of deliverance and dates this chapter before God destroyed the Assyrian army. Isaiah 37, 36-37 Amplified Bible and the angel of the Lord went out and struck 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. And when the surviving men got up early the next morning, they saw all the dead. The connection of the two promises indicate that one would confirm the other. When Hezekiah recovered his health, he could know that God would also deliver him from the Assyrians. Take a lump of figs. It would appear that God healed Hezekiah through the employment of this particular course of medical treatment. In spite of the fact that God can and frequently does bring healing through the use of medical therapies. 2 Kings 28 to 11. Hezekiah said to Isaiah, "What will be the sign that the Lord will completely heal me and that I shall go up to the house of the Lord on the third day?" Isaiah said, this will be the sign to you from the Lord, that he will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall this shadow, indicating the time of day, go forward ten steps or go backward ten steps? Hezekiah answered, It is easy for the shadow to go forward ten steps. No, but let the shadow turn backwards ten steps. So Isaiah the prophet called out to the Lord, and he brought the shadow on the steps ten steps backward by which it had gone down on the sundial of Ahaz. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees or go backward ten degrees? For the purposes of the confirming sign, God has pledged to do a completely miraculous act. He guaranteed that the shadow would begin to move in the opposite direction of the sundial's hands. This was a wonderfully appropriate sign for Hezekiah. By having the shadow of the sundial move backwards, it gave more time in the day, just as God gave Hezekiah more time. It was a miracle, whatever way we take it. God could have reversed the revolution of the earth had he seen fit to do so. For he is a poor clockmaker even, who cannot turn the hands of his own workmanship backward. Or he could have caused the phenomenon by the ordinary laws of refraction. After making this promise, God fulfilled it by extending Hezekiah's life by another 15 years. Hezekiah was given a second promise from the Lord, which was that he would be delivered from the Assyrians' control. The promises that God made were fulfilled without fail. 
Hezekiah continued to live for another 15 years, and during that period, the people of Jerusalem were not brought under the Assyrians' government's authority. Interestingly, during that period, two significant things occurred, which would have long-term consequences for the king of Judah. First, Hezekiah unwisely showed off his wealth to the envoys of Babylon. He was then told that his descendants would one day serve in the palace of the king of Babylon. Scripture records that this took place some 100 years later. In addition, Hezekiah became a father during those last 15 years of his life, and his son would later succeed him as king of Judah. Manasseh was the name of this man. Manasseh was unfortunately one of the worst kings in the history of Judah. Because of his devotion to false gods, the people suffered unimaginable hardships as a result. Indeed, because of this terrible action, worship of the Lord, who is the one true God, was discontinued. As a result, the additional 15 years that Hezekiah was granted turned out to be extremely detrimental to the nation. Popular pastor Billy Graham once said, a man can definitely live for too long. Did God change his plan? However, the issue at hand concerns the plan that God has in mind, as well as Hezekiah's plea. It's been suggested that God changed his mind about what he was about to do as a result of Hezekiah's prayers. Is this something that's taught in the Bible? There are a number of views as to what in fact occurred. There are those who believe that God adjusts and alters his plan as circumstances change. He does not have one set plan. Therefore, when God announced that Hezekiah was going to die through the prophet Isaiah, this was not meant to be some unalterable decree. This was his initial plan, but it certainly was subject to change. In point of fact, it was Hezekiah's prayer that caused the Lord to change his mind and as a result, his plans. This is a further proof, it is believed, that prayer may influence the way God behaves towards us, and it is one of the reasons why prayer is so powerful. There are instances when he will alter his plans in response to the petitions we make. This also happened with Moses. While Moses was away, the crowd grew impatient while waiting for Moses to return to them. The people requested that Aaron construct an idol for them. He obediently obliged with the request to transform their gold earrings into a golden sculpted calf, which was a behavior that was specifically prohibited. Then they began to indulge in revelry, worshipping the idol, while also engaging in immoral behavior such as eating, drinking, and playing. Then the Lord God said to Moses, Go down at once, for the people whom you have brought up from the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have quickly turned aside from the ways which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molten calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, they are stiff-necked, stubborn, rebellious people. Now therefore let me alone and do not interfere, so that my anger may burn against them, and that I may destroy them, and I will make of you, your descendants, a great nation. But Moses appeased and entreated the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your anger burn against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, With evil intent, their God brought them out to kill them in the mountains and destroy them from the face of the earth? Turn away from your burning anger and change your mind about harming your people. Remember, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Jacob, your servants to whom you swore an oath by yourself, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens, and all this land of which I have spoken I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord changed his mind about the harm which he had said he would do to his people. Exodus 32, 7-14, Amplified Bible 
In his response, Moses demonstrates why he is considered one of the most influential intercessors in the Bible. Notice the strong arguments he uses. The people were the Lord's people, and God had cared for them enough to deliver them from Egypt. The Egyptians would gloat if God did what the Egyptians had been unable to do to his people. God must be true to the covenant he made with the patriarchs. This is another indication that the Lord is in complete control of everything. The life of Hezekiah is, for the most part, an example of one who is faithful to the Lord and trusts him. As seen by his courageous changes, his faith went deeper than the surface level. Because Hezekiah put his faith in the Lord, the Lord responded to his prayers, blessed his endeavours, and granted him miraculous victory over his enemies. When faced with an impossible situation, surrounded by the dreadful and determined Assyrian army, Hezekiah did exactly the right thing. He prayed, and God answered.